Welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. I hope you enjoyed Jeff Kanata hosting the show yesterday. He's going to be back again this week. Uh, but for now, let's hit the headlines. <laughs> Minecraft is literally a world full of infinite possibilities, and a pair of researchers are using that to their advantage to teach kids biochemistry. Mark Lorch and Joel Mills recently launched Molecraft. That's short for Molecules in Minecraft, and it's a server dedicated to educating kids about molecular structures and how they form proteins. In an interview on Vice's Motherboard, the creators explained that they used to use PowerPoint presentations to teach kids, but they actually realized they could grab kids' attention much better through Minecraft. Huh, imagine that, getting kids' attention through video games. Much easier than a PowerPoint presentation. Well, the way the server works is there are large models of molecules scattered around the world, and a scavenger hunt guides players around, teaching them about each structure through clues and other objects. Going forward, Lorch and Mills hope to add more and more complex levels to the server, and the University of Hull has a website with information on how to access the server itself. Also, this would look super cool if you experienced it through HoloLens, right? Amazing. All right, so yesterday Jeff talked about MIT and their living bio skin, and today I'm going to talk about MIT and their take-home bio lab. We've all had dreams of genetic engineering from the comfort of our own home, haven't we? Okay, well, maybe we haven't, but MIT's Media Lab is hoping to make that dream come true for the people who have had that dream with Amino, their at-home bio lab for growing cells in a controlled environment. It's not unlike the Molecraft server, actually, in that its founder wanted to create a fun, easy way for people to experience synthetic biology. It's a countertop bioreactor that allows users to run amino apps, which combine DNA programs and growth liquids. It automates more difficult processes and helps people learn by doing. If you want to run a different app, you can, as amino allows users to run a cleaning cycle between programs, making it easy to change up your experiment. By democratizing scientific processes usually confined to professional labs, MIT hopes Amino will help pave the way for anyone to help problem solve using synthetic biology when it's relevant. This is actually a crowdfunding campaign over on Indiegogo, but they're already funded beyond their goal and there aren't too many first edition runs left in the campaign itself. So I figured I'd mention it just in case a lab or a school or you wanted to get in on it. It's up to you guys. Let me know if you get one though, because it looks kind of awesome. All right, everybody who is of legal drinking age in your country, get out your favorite liquor. And if you're not of legal drinking age, get out your favorite juice, because there's a robot bartender that's going to make a custom shot based on your personality. Social Shot is a project featuring a mobile cart with a robot bartender on board. Uh, five ingredients representing personality traits hang up on top of the cart. Those are openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. Here's where it gets weird, if that wasn't weird enough already. A user can log into their Facebook profile via a terminal that is right there on the cart, and then the terminal collects data from that person's Facebook profile and determines their personality through an algorithm that analyzes the user's likes. After all that data gets crunched, the robotic barkeep puts together those five different ingredients into a custom shot based on your very own personality. Fun! Unless you're totally 100% neurotic, in which case, it's all going to be one ingredient. It's going to be solid liquor. And honestly, if this team finds their way to Vegas for CES, I am totally, right now, officially inviting them to our show so that we can test out social shots on Tomorrow Daily. Because, honestly, it seems like it'd be pretty fun. Oh, hey, guys, it's Tuesday. Let's check out what's going to empty our wallets this week. This week's new releases, of course, again, some great video games coming out. Call of Duty Black Ops 3 is available this week. Uh, obviously, the continuation of one of the best-selling video games of all time, Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Uh, there's going to be all kinds of different modes. People are pretty excited about this. It actually looks really, really good, and I'm sure any of you who like shooty man games will enjoy it. And then on the other side of video gaming, from shooting at people to driving around with them, Need for Speed is out this week for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. So if you really have a Need for Speed, games available for you, go for it, have a great time. If you find yourself heading to the cinema this weekend, make sure you check out maybe Spectre if you're in the mood for a little James Bond action. This is Daniel Craig's very last forte as the titular British spy. Uh, but 
If you're not in the mood for a Spectre, you want something a little bit more fun, you can head over and check out the Peanuts movie, which apparently is getting pretty good notices as far as I've seen. Uh, but that's it for your new releases. Let's check out our photographer of the day. This week's photographer is Yiaki. At least that's how he says you pronounce his name. So I'm gonna trust you on this one, Yiaki, because that's what you wrote in your email. And he took this picture with his iPod Touch 5th Gen. He says, Hey guys, my name is Yiaki, and this is a photo I took with my old iPod Touch 5. It isn't a phone, but it is an awesome photo. This was taken at Red Cliffs Lodge in Moab, Utah of a morning sunrise. I have an iPhone 4S and will hopefully get an iPhone 6S for Christmas. Of course, you have permission to use my photo on the show because it would be stupid if I sent in this photo and not give you permission. Keep up the awesome show. I really love it and enjoy listening to it on the bus ride to school every morning. I hope I see it on the show. Thanks. Well, Yiaki, uh, there it is, your picture right there on Tomorrow Daily. Congratulations. And also, I think you have a silent K in your name that's out to get you, so you should really keep an eye on that. If you guys want to send in your photography to be featured on the show, you can email it to us, tomorrow at cnet.com. Make sure you give us permission to use it on the show and tell us a little story about it and what device you took it on. Uh, and if you want to find us on social media, we are Tomorrow Daily on Facebook and Twitter. I'm at Ashley Esqueda. Jeff is at, at Jeff Kanata with two N's and one T. And Logan is at Logan Moy. If you want to share the show, we would love that. That would be great of you. Just send somebody to TomorrowDaily.com. It's that easy. Uh, that's it for the show today, guys. We'll be back tomorrow with a brand new docket of weird science fact meeting science fiction. But until then, be good humans. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>